All right, and with us right now, we've got Armand Kroom. Armand, you're a certified financial planner. You're the owner of Kroom Financial, and you're the creator of the Financial Effect, and you're a fellow Navy vet. So hats off to you, shipmate. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. <laughs> All right. So uh, first off, what did you do in the Navy? Oh, well, that's a long story. So uh, obviously, I uh, graduated from Tulane University uh, down in New Orleans and was a naval officer. Uh, ended up going to like nuclear power school in wow. nuclear engineering. Uh, make a long story short, I medically disqualified out of that. Ended up becoming a supply corps officer and ended up here in San Diego on the USS Nimitz as primarily a sales officer. So I ran a ship store. I ran the business side of the uh, military. I ran uh, uh, two ship stores, a vending machine operation, a barber shop. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got the bug for running business pretty early on. I liked the running business part. I just didn't like the people telling me what to do part. <laughs> so you, were you on a carrier? I was on the USS Nimitz carrier. Yeah. Wow. So tell me about, so if you're running a store on a carrier, like how big is it? Like think like in terms of like what, you know, like, you know, kind of civilian, what, you know, we walk into a 7-Eleven about that size or what? So, yeah, it's about, so the two stores, you had one big one that had like, um, you know, radios. It was kind of like a, a small like shop ed or something along those lines where you had different things that sailors could come in and get t-shirts and shirts and things of that nature, but also food, candy, cookies, <laughs> uh, things of that yeah. nature. And then we had like a smaller store that was more, we call it gee dunk, uh, you know, oodles and noodles things that I need to <laughs> sure. run in there and get. And so I was over the inventory, getting the supplies, ordering the supplies, getting it, you know, into the ship store and then picking out what people would want. Uh, it was a little bit of a disadvantage, right? It's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, yeah. Sailors couldn't go shop anywhere else, right? right. <laughs> so, but. <laughs> Where else are you going to go? Where, Where are you going to go? I'm the only game in town, man. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, that's crazy. So on a carrier, did they have, um, did they, you know, obviously they've got the galley where everyone eats, but did they have where you could buy, they didn't have like any kind of like fast food or not fast food, obviously, but did they have anything outside of the galley that you could also buy extra, maybe vending machines yes. and what was at the store? Right. right. Is that it? Or? Store. Yeah. So, I mean, if you didn't want something at the galley or whatever the case may be, like I said, we had like oodles and noodles. We had you yeah. know, soups, microwavable soups that you could microwave and eat. The vending machines, you could obviously get a Coke, Pepsi, Mountain yeah. Dew and, and things of that nature. And so, yeah, I also ran the laundry uh, laundry mat too. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, people but, don't, so you, you don't think about that. It's like, so when I was, I was always shore duty and uh you know so it's all run by civilians and but you know when you're at sea there i don't i don't think you got a full-time civilian on on board that's running that sort of stuff so it's got to be all people wearing the uniform yep and, and then that aspect, it was me it was me and uh it was an experience of a lifetime of uh, running a multi-million dollar operation at the age of 24 so, <laughs> yeah who gives who gives the keys to a 24 year old? Here's a multi million dollar operation. Yeah, don't screw it up. <laughs> See, that's the kind of cool thing about you know if you've got you know if you're getting you know your kids are contemplating um, you know serving for a handful of years, um, you know the on the job training is just an incredible opportunity depending on what you do, right? And so, mm -hmm. um, so I was a journalist and you know, again, I'm 18, 19 years old and I'm running around carrying this $35,000, $40,000 TV camera. All right. And just getting out to do all this stuff, like in front of the camera doing this, like nobody does that. Like you don't do like if when you a typical journalist career route, you get done with college and then you're interning for a few years doing crap work and maybe you can work your way to get in front of the camera, uh, you know, after a couple of years, if you're, if you show promise, you test good, test well, and that sort of thing. Uh, but anchor desk, like I was doing anchor stuff. Like for my, so my last year in, when I was out in the Aleutian Islands, I was DJing three hours a day, uh, my own morning show. 
I was, uh, then I would do a half hour news program every afternoon. Um, it was hard as hell. That was a lot of work, but you know, it really, really helped me uh, to become more, I wasn't necessarily good at what I did, but uh, man, I got a lot of experience, a lot of comfort with it. So yeah, so very, very cool. Okay, so uh, that, we're, we're not necessarily know. doing a show about uh, Navy, but uh, there you go. Uh, you hey. never know what you're gonna get on the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. Well, um, well, one thing I will always say is that, you know, hindsight 2020, I always tell people about being in the military. I hated it, Yeah, but I would do it again. <laughs> right? That's like I, I would do it again from the experience and just bridging that into my financial planning practice. When I had a hard day starting this business, yeah. it wasn't harder than what I had already done. So that anytime I get hard days in starting my business or doing entrepreneurship, totally. it is nothing compared to being at the, at sea 24 hours being away from your family, like that is nothing. So I can push forward just fine, even if I'm just like, oh my God, I just had the worst day. Well, still better than when I was at the sea. So yeah. <laughs> And by the way, the, all that big thumping sound, that was, that was Armand beating the, 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 the table there. So uh, just, just FYI. <laughs> um, all right, so um, Armand, so you go from military experience and then eventually you find your way into becoming a CFP. And, and so why certified financial planning? So I got my degree in finance and then obviously I ran the ship store and everything along those lines. So I, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of anything else to do that, you know, utilize my degree. So I thought, you know, and someone had mentioned to me about financial planning. And so I, uh, you know, Northwest Mutual got introduced to Northwest Mutual and New York uh, life and stuff like that. But then I ended up running into a, a company called First Command that dealt mostly with the military, which, you know, I had to had that and, you know, did financial planning. So I ended up joining them as my first job as a financial planner uh, to learn the ropes. And so I would imagine you were a pretty good hire for them because you had cred. And if they were marketing to a military audience, uh, I get I get that. That's, that's an audience really that really appreciates. Yeah, really appreciates the association. Um, Okay, so then professionally, eventually you find your way to grow your own practice. How, how did that happen? <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things you get comfortable where you are. So I was very happy at this company um, and I actually made it high up in uh, the ranks, if you will. Uh, one year I became one of their top financial advisors, probably number 15. I think it was number 15 out of the whole entire group. And... Um, during this, between the time I started from 2004 to 2009, I had also been being uh, coached by a guy named Bill Bacharach on how to run a financial planning business. Mm. And that was a fee only type of business. Now you imagine most Northwest mutuals, things of that nature, they usually want to sell some life insurance and they don't particularly like charging a fee. I don't, you know, I haven't been with uh, this previous company in a long time, so I don't know where they are now, but mm -hmm. I got to speak in front of the entire company. Uh, I was like the headliner uh, and, you know, talking about my business, how I grew it, everything. I get off the stage mm -hmm. and the vice president comes on after me and says, Hey, we did a survey and they said that uh, charging a fee is salesy. So we're no longer going to allow you to do that mm -hmm. to military members. Yeah, And I remember just going, well, you just had me speak about charging fees yeah. and then you come up on stage and basically say, you're going to hinder me from doing what I say that I do. From that moment, uh, I had, um, I've, al I've always been the type of person that watched other business people in my field, entrepreneurs, things of that nature. So I knew another advisor who had left. Yeah. And I think probably within, by the time I got back from the trip, I texted him and said, we need to talk. Mm. And so then I transitioned from that company to where I'm at now, Cambridge Investment Research. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you start your own, uh, you start your own, you got, did you, you didn't have a book of business when you're starting your own thing, right? So when you start at the one company, sometimes they give you people to work with. And right. So a lot of those people, when I left, followed me. But they give you some people to work with. You develop the relationship. You start getting referrals. 
uh, and you start building. So I had about only like 50 clients mm -hmm. that uh, followed me uh, to the new company. Yeah. Um, so that's not, I mean, so you just have to, you have to get out and work it. And you did because you got a good book of business right now. So how do you do that? And, and so for, for an aspiring financial planner today, um, take us through, if you had to start over today, what, where would you focus your energies and efforts? So getting back to the Bill Bacharach uh, model and the fee only, one of the things that allows me to, I, you know, I only have 80 something clients. Mm -hmm. So I charge a, a, a retainer fee, if you will. This does a couple of things. This allows you to be service focused mm -hmm. on taking care of the client. You're not out there constantly beating the bush trying to get new clients. So if it's like a one-time sale thing, you ne it's a nonstop process of trying to get new clients. Yeah. So I got trained on basically how to make it so that your clients can come to you for anything that has a dollar sign attached mm -hmm. to it. And so you become the jack of all trades or the quarterback of their finances. And yeah. so you get to know mortgage brokers, CPAs, estate planners, um, and obviously you handle investments, life insurance, things of that nature. And so when a client comes to you with a need, you connect them to all the people, all the dots that they need to be connected to mm. to make their financial plan whole. And people will pay a retainer fee for that. To so take yeah. that, that, okay, I want to refinance. Okay, who do I trust to refinance my home? Yeah. What should I be looking for when I find this mortgage broker? Am I getting the best deal? Right. What are the other things that need so to happen? Can, can, fee, can fee only planners, uh, CFPs, they, they can't earn commissions on products, right? No. Wow. So they, so, so they can, so fee only can get like commissions from like life insurance. But when you're a series 65 and I refer you to a mortgage broker, that right. mortgage broker cannot pay me anything. Mm. If I refer you to the CPA, they can't pay me. If there's yeah. like a turnkey real estate person that I meet that I think may be a good fee, they can't give me a referral fee. No. That mm. is, uh, that is not even a, I think it's a CFE rule, but it's also a security sit license rule because you, you want to act in the best interest of your clients. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you would hope, um, and, and I'm sure there are other people that have been burned by this in the past. Um, you know, we had a really bad experience with our financial planner, sold us a product that was absolute S H I T. I mean, it was, it was terrible. And, um, and then, you know, I just was kind of a little bit ignorant at the time and I just didn't know. Um, and we ended up just taking a bath. Like it was a dumb whole life policy and that we couldn't afford to fund it anymore. And we'd lost like $7,000 gone, poof, nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just talked us into like, well, we want to cash out. I know we're going to take a hit, but we'll cash out. And he's like, ah, things will turn around for you. You know, just did not act in our best interest. And, um, yep, that's unfortunate. Okay. So, um, from a marketing perspective, tell me about where you get business and, and what you would recommend to someone who's just kind of getting started. Well, I've always been by referral only. And so, Obviously, uh, you know, trying to kick that up a little bit, uh, but mostly what I do when I charge a client a retainer fee, it really puts us in a situation where I don't have to sell them anything. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my clients, I obviously want you to renew your fee with me every single year, right? So my job is to not tee you off, <laughs> right? You know, right? <laughs> so, you know, we've had instances where people lose their job and we pause their fee just because, Hey, if you lose your job, we're, we're in it together. No. And so I get to the point now where I don't even have to ask for referrals from my clients. They just kind of give it to me right? Uh, just because of the service that they provide. And they, you, you can really connect the dots. You can see what your life or your finances were like, like before you met me, and mm -hmm. now after you met me, you should be able to see a pretty big shift in how mm -hmm. you and your wife interact with each other and how your finances are going and the things that you're doing. It, it, it should be pretty freaking obvious. And so uh, I think most clients, they are. And then my whole goal is to earn trust and yeah. keep trust. And so from there, uh, helps to build more relationships and get more referrals. Armand, one thing that you do on your website, and I'm on your website right now, it's croomfinancial.com, C-R-O-O-M, financial.com. Um, you're not afraid 
to put your personal brand out there. You've got pictures of you, your family, and uh, you know, it's, I, we, we connect with you. Why do you do this? The reason why I do this is because the reason why you would hire someone like me is so that you wouldn't have to worry about money, right? So what we- Yeah, what but, we but, but why, why the personal branding? Why is that important for financial planners today? The and again, I'm giving you a softball here because you know that this is absolutely my school of- <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. It's about, you know, I have a family too. I have a wife, I have a kid, mm. I have kids. I want you to get to know me. It's, a, it's, about, it's about me and my family and, you know, for the most part, the clients that I work with, I'm on the same journey as you are. Yeah. Um, so uh, I want you to know that, that, hey, you know, especially during these times, you know, I'm, I'm handling a, a five-year-old, I'm, I'm, I'm handling a, a, a three-year-old and an 11-year-old, and we're trying to make it through. I'm trying to make decisions between me and my wife, whether or not to buy yeah. the Infinity versus the, the Mazda or what house that we buy. So, you know, you're not having any discussions in your home that I'm not having in mind. Right. Yeah, I love that. And, and, and here's the reality, and I've, I've shared this before, but people don't connect with services. They don't, I, and it's, it's super easy com to commoditize financial planning or financial services, super easy. And there's robo-investors that that's all they do. It's just a commodity, right? And so, but, you know, I, I think for today's financial planner to thrive, uh, it, it, what makes you different? What makes you unique? Can I trust you? Uh, you know, are you going to be looking up for my best interest? Are you someone that's like me, right? Um, so I, I, I look, that's where I would, I would bet it all on black, right? I would just, I'm going all in on, uh, on personal branding today. And yeah. I think that's the differentiator. And a lot of people are afraid to do that that. So that's why I just want to commend you um, that, that, and it's no wonder that that's been helpful for your business is you're approachable. Like I, I, I don't want to just do business with, you know, again, whatever broker you, you, or whatever uh, the provider of the services, I don't care about them. I want to work with Armand. <laughs> and so again, just based on, I know some of the success you've been able to enjoy uh, it's just proof uh, that again, get out, it might be uncomfortable, right? But we all have to break out our own little inner Oprah. Oprah has never been afraid to be on the cover of her own magazine. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't do it because she's a raving egomaniac, but she does it because she knows her audience connects with her. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's just, I, uh, I love people that do the uncomfortable thing and they get the photos done and they, they, produce the original content on social and they keep on give, 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 give. Um, it's a winning plan. It's a winning yeah. plan. And that's what awesome. we're trying so, to do. And, and we're so also what's, ne to what, what's next for the next 12 months for you guys? So one of the things that we're doing is we're going to try to develop a program. Like I said before, we're at about 80 clients and the way we take care of those clients is we meet face to face with them three times a year handling mm -hmm anything from taxes to tax planning to updating their financial plan uh, and things of that, na that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm going to try to do is open it up for a reduced amount. I uh, haven't decided that yet where you can still kind of get that personalized service, uh, but maybe not necessarily face to face with me uh, so that you can have somebody looking into your accounts and giving you advice on what specifically you should be doing, what things that you should uh, look out for based upon your goals. Yeah. And so I think that's really important. I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. I just need someone to kind of, you know, look over my shoulder, if you will, and go, hey, you know, your emergency savings is just not where it should be. Uh, I've also noticed that you're not, you know, maxing out you know, this investment over here, or you're not doing this over here, or there's a big hole in life insurance. You don't have to get it through me, but you might want to take a look at that and see, you know, you know, how much it costs and where you should go. And if you need any help with that, we, we're certainly here to help you. And so uh, we're going to open up that service so that uh, I can uh, hire some more people to help me service those people. Because what we don't want to have happen is, and that's what makes me, do. I don't want to have 300 clients and we can't provide good service. Right, right. All right. So Armand Kroom, you are again, certified financial planner. You're the owner of Kroom Financial. You're creator of the financial effect. Your websites are kroomfinancial.com and 
thefinancialeffect.com. Uh, and uh, just really quick, if, if you could explain what the, finan the financial effect is. So the, obviously with financial planners, we have to have two websites. We can't yeah. have a blog on uh, the, the main one. So yeah. uh, the financial effect is just uh, uh, the, 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 for, for the blog, for people to go and get content, basically to try to set themselves up to see me. So, you know, how to make decisions on when to buy a house, uh, you know, how to communicate with your wife, try to decide between needs and wants. Uh, and, you know, when you go to that website, there'll be a link so that you'll be able to get to the main website, which is Crew Financial, if you are interested in hiring me. Sure. Awesome. Armand, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thank you for having me.